Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to answer a question you ask me all the time and that is, hey Nick, what is the .NET developer roadmap? What is a roadmap I can take and then do one, two, three, four, five and be a solid .NET developer at the end of it? Now the answer to this is very complicated because .NET is such an expansive ecosystem with so many verticals. You can be a game developer with Unity, you can do frontend with Blazor, backend with ASP.NET Core, you can do good old MVC, you can do, you can so, so many things. So what I want to point your attention at is this GitHub repository over here, which please, if you like this video, go and give it a star. It is the inspiration for this video. And it actually offers you an ASP.NET Core Developer Roadmap for 2022. Now, this is a very generic and not very opinionated roadmap. Now, my focus as a .NET developer is on high performance, high throughput, doing .NET, in Docker and Kubernetes, and I'm mainly doing APIs, long running services like consumers and lambdas. That is my thing. So I'm going to give you my own take on that roadmap for developers like me. This video might be long, so without any further ado, let's go straight into the video. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So I used that raw file that the person that made the repository was kind enough to provide and I modified this and I simplified it quite a bit actually. So previously you had flags to indicate whether you should know something, whether it's good to know, it's a maybe, it's a third option, is a possibility, I don't know. I simplified this to three different items. A red means a must know, a yellow means a good to know, and a gray means maybe. And I will explain why it is a maybe as I go. And keep in mind that this is very opinionated, this is my take, it doesn't mean that everyone will agree with this, it's fine. We can disagree, but this is how I would work, this is how I would hire, and there is definitely a room for that. So I've kept a lot of these parts here the same. You need Git, you need a HTTPS, you need to know how to Google for stuff, and you need to learn the dot and CLI. Those are all true. However, I marked data structures and algorithms as a maybe, and that's because you really kind of need these data structures and algorithms in the really, really high end. And at that point, you're going to have the experience to know them out of curiosity anyway, the, the trees, the linked lists, this. It's a more narrow use case, but I don't think it should be, you know, a must know, but the rest you should definitely know. And of course, you should learn C Sharp 10, the basics, or and even beyond, and then .NET 6. Then you have the solid principles, which I think are still pretty good. I think people give them way more value than they should. They're not that important. Some of them are, but not all of them. I have have a video on that if you want to uh, check how I rank them and I explain why. Uh, but they're still very good to know. They give you a very good like guide and a sort of starting point for a more junior developer. And I've also added as a good to know Dry, Kiss and Yagni, which stand for don't repeat yourself, keep it simple, stupid, and you aren't going to need it because these acronyms usually tie into solid and they're very good to keep in mind and learn. Then I have the basics of ASP.NET Core, and that is learn how web API works, learn REST because most of the APIs are REST nowadays, routing, middlewares, filters and attributes, configuration, and then authentication and authorization. Now that's important. The previous roadmap actually made explicit mention of identity server and I think some others. And the thing is, Realistically, you don't need to know how an identity provider is implemented. You just need to be able to integrate with the standard, whether that is OAuth 2, like an API key, whatever, and know how to use claims and roles and everything to integrate that into your application. But unless you are building identity software, you don't need to know how it works. You just need to know the flow of the standard. So that's why I removed all that and I only kept that you should know the identity ASP.NET Core aspect of it, not really the implementation. And then minimal APIs, the new kid on the block, I think they're going to become more and more prevalent as we go. By the way, this is in the description in a GitHub repo. If you like this or you want to modify it or suggest things, maybe give it a star on GitHub. Then we have SQL fundamentals. And even though SQL fundamentals are a must know, I think deep knowledge on the subject isn't really needed because at that level, you're probably going to make choices based on performance and usually performance driven choices in databases lead to databases created for specific use cases. If you want search, you're probably going to go with Elasticsearch. If you want a blazing fast cache, you're probably going to go with Redis. If you want very fast point reads or like partition specific 
queries, you're probably going to go with Dynamo or Cosmos, and I'm going to explain them as we go. So don't stress it if you don't go very deep in SQL Server. I actually removed the triggers from here. I haven't used triggers in ages. Uh, store procedures is the same, but I'm keeping it because if I remove it, people will kill me. But again, I don't use store procedures anymore. So yeah, the fundamentals are great, but that's how far you should go. And then ORMs, Dapper and Entity Framework are the two things you should probably know. It's the two things you will encounter in the wild in some way or the other. So I agree with both choices. Um, and then you have dependency injection. Um, I've removed every other dependency injection container other than the built-in one. I don't think you need the third party. I think the next one you would probably need is uh, a source generated one that will work in a nice way. And we don't have that yet, but until then the built-in one is very, very good. You don't need a third party one. And if you want more features, you can use Scrutor, great library that will add all the missing uh, features that you will probably need. And then you have the life cycle, scope, trans and singleton. You should know this. Then we have caching, and this is sort of the same as the databases, but you should know how to use the in-memory cache and then learn how to use Redis with the library stackexchange.redis. This is how you probably see this. And then it's good to know how to do a second level cache, how to use it in anti framework but again this assumes you are using anti framework so it's more of a maybe and then databases and this is where it becomes interesting i think everyone should know sqlite it's used everywhere really not necessarily in real world applications that need to scale or whatever but to do small things or like to swap out a database to do integration testing or maybe unit testing it's used a lot i think it's the one you should definitely know uh, but then I've ranked these maybe databases, and it really depends on what you're trying to do um, based on how I see their usage in the wild. So Postgres, MariaDB, uh, SQL Server, and then MySQL. Then for search engines, assuming you have the need for a search engine, Elasticsearch is probably the best option you're going to go with. Uh, and then you have the NoSQL databases, which you know I have Redis here, I have this one here. And I think knowing one of these, not necessarily both, they, they kind of work the same behind the scenes to a huge degree. Uh, but you should definitely know either Cosmos DB or DynamoDB. There, there will be definitely a crucial part of your architecture. And then MongoDB, it, it's not something I would use in 2022. I would definitely go with any of these databases any day of the week. But again, that's just my take on it. And then you have logging frameworks. Um, I would personally recommend using Serilog for logging just because of the sync functionality that they have and how community driven the package is, how whenever there's a new way to log things, there will be a new sync on NuGet or GitHub to, to use, for example, for Elasticsearch, for Datadog, for Logly, for anything. Great, great library. And then you would have a log management system to push your logs into and search into them because you wouldn't do like console or file. We don't really do that anymore. Um, knowing the ELK stack, Elasticsearch, Kibana, that sort of thing, I, it's a great cost-effective way to do it. Uh, managed versions like Logly or Datadog or Sentry are also great. You don't need to learn all of them, but you need to understand how they operate in, in some way. This will be hugely driven by what the company that you are working for is using. So don't stress it, but knowing the ELK stuff is actually good. For metrics, I think you must know open telemetry. It's an open standard that every type of service is trying to standardize. And then Prometheus, Grafana, very good combination, the ELK stack as well. And then again, you can have Datadog here for metrics. So this is another thing that's heavily dependent on your provider. Same with distributed tracing. You have Datadog, Lightstep, Jaeger. This is such a big topic. And again, it really depends on your provider. So these are the ones I would take a look. Then on the API clients and communication, REST, I think, is a must nowadays. Old data is a very situational. And I haven't actually seen people really use it. Uh, that's just my experience, though. Now, GraphQL is good to know. It's another very situational thing. But if you use GraphQL, I highly recommend you do it with hot chocolate. Uh, then for testing, and this is a big one, must know unit testing, must know integration testing. And in my opinion, you should know end-to-end -end testing and behavior testing. But I have them as maybe just in case you don't want to invest um, into them early on. But as you go, you should probably take a look at this. But in terms of frameworks, I recommend XUnit. In terms of mocking libraries, I recommend nSubstitute. But you should know mock as well because there's tons of software out there using mock. And then for sessions, I recommend Fluent sessions. Then for integration testing, understanding how WAF works or web application factor is very important. 
And then if you want to go deeper on more complicated stuff, you should know how test server works. And then for end-to-end -end playwright, I think is a better offering than Selenium. So that's what I would recommend. And then for behavior testing, if you are to do it, I think Specflow is the best way to do it objectively. Um, but there are other DDD frameworks that are lighter that allow you to have a similar experience, not as good though. Now, it is very common to have API SDKs and the libraries I recommend are Refit. We have a video on that or maybe REST shop. That's a decent one as well, but I recommend Refit. Uh, generally, I think it's a better implementation. And then for real-time communications, you really want to know uh, WebSockets and then Signal are uh, core, but it's not something you must know. It's not as common as you'd think. Um, object mapping, again, it's a good to know, uh, and I would use Automapper or Mapster, depending on what I want to do. Mapster is very good, but Automapper has been around for a long time, um, and there's a lot of Automapper code, so you should know how to use it. Then for task scheduling, the built-in uh, background service, now in .NET, if you have one service that needs to have scheduling internally, is great, especially with a new timer API. Hangfire is a good to know if you want to do more complicated scheduling. Then for design patterns, CQRS and event sourcing are very prevalent because of the combination with Mediator. And then Strategy Builder and Singleton are also very good as well. And then this is where we go outside of the code itself and into other things I believe you should know. And this is how to do continuous integration and continuous delivery. And knowing any of these tools is great. The reason why none of them are must know is because this, again, heavily depends on how much they cost and which ones that your company is using. So you're going to have to use the one that your employer is paying for. So it doesn't really matter which one is the best or which one is a must know because you kind of depend on the pricing and your employer. You should be competent at at least one cloud provider and understand it, the services and how everything hangs together. Um, containerization, Docker is a must know. Orchestration, Kubernetes is a must know. Serverless, AWS Lambda or Azure Functions. And here you can see I don't have the Google solution. It's because I haven't actually used Google Cloud Platform before, so I can't speak for things I don't know. But Lambdas or Functions are great. Then Message Bus, Azure Service Bus or AWS SQS. And Mass Transit is a maybe. Maybe I will explain why that's a maybe in the dedicated Mass Transit video that is coming. Then Message Broker, uh, Azure Service Bus, or AWS SNS, both of these choices are good. Heavily depends on the cloud provider your employer is paying for. And then you have event streaming, so Kafka Kinesis or Event Hubs. This is more of a situational type of tech. So if you're doing IoT or you have a very specific event streaming use case in your system, you might want to look at them. That's why they are good to know. And then for API Gateway, each cloud provider has uh, its own. And then if you need the custom reverse proxy, I think traffic is a very solid one. And then these are all good to know libraries. So Poly for retries and resiliency. Mediator is very prevalent. Fluent validation, benchmark.net, you know I love it. Swashbuckle for that swagger goodness. And then Node Time is a maybe. It's a great library, but I've never actually had to use it. So I include it because I think it's great, but I think it's more important when you have the perfect use case for it. And then I believe that you should dip your toes into DevOps and I will update this with more things actually, but at the very minimum, you should know infrastructure as code, ideally Terraform or Pulumi. Again, whichever one your employer has chosen to build the infrastructure as code with. So that's everything. The link is in the description. Please let me know what I'm missing, what you do like to see, what you think shouldn't be here, what you think should be here. And I'm more than happy to reply down in the comments. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.